So what I'm attempting to do today is to turn this. This is a cube, although if you're like me, it doesn't look much like a cube. I can't seem to see where the cubiness is, but it's it's right. It's 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters. Yada yada yada. So, for all intents and purposes, it is a cube. Half paduk, half wild mango. And what I'm going to do is and I'll show you this when I'm a bit more set up to do it is to turn it like that and as you can see it's quite quite odd um, I'm going to take the corner off there so I've got somewhere to get the old um, you can't see it can you um, so I've got the uh, tail stock end there um, and then we're going to turn it so what I'll do for now is I'll just pop off cut the corner off and then come back so here we are I've cut the flattened the end off one end found the middle of that triangle I think I found it in the right way um, and now I've tightened it all up it shouldn't move anywhere I'm going to turn the dial down on the speed because this is going to have a, a, an odd spin so there's going to be a little bit of vibration going through the machine so you start it off low minimize the vibrations and I'll just show you how it's going to spin as you can see there's a little bit of vibration but as I as I start to turn it, I'll be putting my arm on it so it will lessen the vibrations. You see, it's a very weird spin. Um, I tried turning the cube a few weeks ago. It was a small Paduke one. Didn't really come out like it does on the YouTube videos. I put that down to being the fact that it was probably... Maybe I'd gone a bit too small with the piece of wood I was using. And um, maybe that had had an effect. So we'll try a bit of a bigger piece. And if this doesn't work, then I don't know. I'll have to watch, I'll have to re-watch the videos again. So what I've got to do now is I've got to set this up. So we're going to get nothing... Nothing touching and stopping it. Nope. That's about right. Um, yeah, and I'll start um, start turning this, and then we'll come back. Right. So today, as you can see, I've turned the bowl round from the queue. This was the end that was over there. It's now in the jaws of the chuck. Chuck, 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 chuck. Chuck, chuck, chuck. What I've done here as well is I've just drawn straight lines between where the points are of the bowl at the moment. So basically all this has to come off. That's all waste. I could just probably cut that off, but I'll do it on the lathe. And then somehow I've got to work out how we keep these points here. Um, I've watched them do a couple of uh, bowls like this on um, YouTube, but I couldn't work out if they did anything different to keep the, the three points on. So, um, it's kind of a see what happens kind of thing at the moment. Um, I'm sure as I start carving it will all become clear. But that's where I am 
at the moment. So, this is how far I've got at the moment. Um, I've had to work out where the corners were. That one's taken a bit of a knock. But you can see as it's coming down, it's coming down with these one, two, three points on it. This bit here is coming down and it'll start to take some of this out, which is a bit I was worried about how to do. It's just, I think, the angle at which I take this cart, take the rest of this bowl out will determine you know, the shape of that, I think. I'm not saying it will. I've still got the tailstock attached to this bit here, although the, all this bit's gonna be removed. One of the things I learned yesterday from watching these videos is that the tenon you make, which is the little, the little bit the um, chuck grabs onto, tend to give way under the pressure of the hollowing out. Um, some of the guys have left them probably at this point I'm at now and then taken the tail stock away, hollowed the rest out. The trouble is the amount of pressure, even with a sharp chisel that you're putting on this, is only being held on by a little bit down here. You don't know whether you've gone with the grain, you don't know whether there's any small cracks in the wood. Micro cracks in, in the wood will cause the tenon to split. Um, excess pressure will, could cause the uh, jaws to lose grip and misshape it as, it as it comes flying out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep the tail stock on for as long as possible. And if that means going right into the bowl and then taking it off later on, you know, towards the end, I don't mind leaving it on that long. Um, just so when this is finished, I have a nice bowl, to be honest. It's a lovely bit of wild mango and it's a lovely bit of paduke. There's a lot of nice grain on there. Um, so I don't, I don't want to make a, a silly mistake like taking it off, taking it off the tailstock too soon. Um, so I'm going to have to work. I'm just going to have to play that bit by ear. But it's coming along. It's probably got another couple of hours of carving, you know, an hour or so of sanding maybe, and we'll be there. We will be there. Um, and as you can see, it'll be a lovely bar when it's finished. Once I've got all the sanding done, lovely jubbly. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Right, excuse me, purples. Right, we've got to that point now where I've hollowed it out as far as I can with the tail stock on. Obviously, this is going to be hollowed out a lot more than this, but it gets to a point where you're so far away, there's such a distance between the tool rest and where the chisel's hitting down here that on the smaller chisels, you get a lot of catches and um, a lot of vibration so what I shall do now is as you can see I've thinned it right down to that point I either get a, a, a hacksaw on it if I can get a hacksaw in there or I might just uh, give it a slap with a hammer you know, if it moves and it shouldn't, gaffer tape it. If it doesn't move and it should, whack it with a hammer. Perfect DIY. Right, so I'm just going to do that now. Uh, and then I shall come back to a bit more hollowing out. Once I've done a few other bits, give the machine. Which is getting slightly, slightly warm. It's not hot, 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 hot. But it's warm. Um, let that cool down a bit. I've done quite a bit of work on there today, putting the motor through a lot of stress. But as you can see, it's starting to take shape now. 
three corners, the little dippy bit. A um, little bit more carving on there, a lot more sanding. It probably won't be finished today. Um, but certainly you'll be able to get it done tomorrow at the latest. So here we are. It's about 7.30. Fucky day is it? Friday, Friday evening. I've just spent two days on this bowl, and it is, if I blow my own trumpet for a second, a thing of absolute beauty. Almost as gorgeous as I am. Paduke and wild mango. Turned it from a cube. Uh, let's see if we can lay it on the side. Going to look at the shape of the top. It's going to just roll off in the direction I don't want it to, and there it goes. Let's see, try and keep it in the sunlight actually, just to really show off the beauty of that paduke and the mango. I mean, the mango is a beautiful bit of wood anyway. And the paduke as well. Two stunning bits of wood. And I'm extremely, extremely happy with that. 